Hudson County View Live at Uncut. I'm your host, the guy that tells you two and two makes three, your favorite cult of personality, John R. Hytus, the latest and greatest at Hudson County News. First, we have quite a few items in uh, Jersey City and Hoboken Public Safety. There uh, was an email that circulated over the weekend from the a Jersey City Fire Union official, and you know, there's some talk that these two departments may merge, and uh, Hoboken officials are telling us to pump the brakes. So we're going to explain a little bit about what happened there. Also in the Bio Square City, unfortunately some sad news, a uh, retired Hoboken Fire Chief passed away over the weekend and also in a similar uh, sad vein, we have seen that a police officer from Jersey City has uh, passed away after a long bout with can cancer. So we want to let you know what happened there and how you could help out the family if you're so inclined. And uh, we're also going to be talking a little bit about what's going on in Weehawken. And we're specifically talking about how they're trying to acquire that waterfront walkway from New York Waterway, similar to what we've seen happening in Hoboken. And this actually could be uh, bad news for the officials over there. We're going to explain why. And we're also going to talk a little bit about what's happening in Hudson County via Union City. What I mean by that, a retired Union City police chief now has a new 118, nearly $119,000 a year gig at the Hudson County Sheriff's Office. And of course, as always today, I'm joined with a guest, and uh, we're very fortunate to have one of the best in New Jersey coaching history, and that's Bob Hurley, and he's also the president of the People's Park Foundation, so we're going to chat about Liberty State Park, all that, and a whole lot more right after this word from our sponsors. Stevens Jersey City Ford Certified Parts and Service, located at Route 440 and Communipaw Ave, is your number one source for Ford and Lincoln automotive needs. We use certified Ford Motocraft products to keep your Ford running in top shape. Motocraft parts are backed with the Ford warranty, which includes a two-year unlimited mileage guarantee. Our team will have the right Motocraft part to ensure the best performance from your Ford or Lincoln. You can order in person at the parts counter or online. Let us help keep your Ford or Lincoln in the best shape at Stevens Jersey City Ford. Burns Brothers Memorials, Monuments, and Markers, 787 Tunley Avenue, Jersey City. Hudson County's only monument maker, serving all faiths and cemeteries. Design studio and launch inventory on site. Cemetery inscriptions and custom orders welcome. Burns Brothers Memorials, Monuments, and Markers, 787 Tunley Avenue, just south of Seacorkers Road. Craftsmanship that will last for all eternity. Burns Brothers, Jersey City, Albert H. Hopper, North Arlington. Visit us on the net. Consumer Carpets, 3408 Kennedy Boulevard in the Jersey City Heights, your one-stop store for residential and commercial floor treatments. Carpeting, linoleum, tiles, laminates, hardwood floors, area rugs, remnants, all major brands, all in stock. Free estimates, same-day installation. Consumer Carpets, it's savings, selection, installation. Credit cards and debit cards accepted. Financing available. Consumer Carpets, price to fit your budget, installation to fit your schedule. On the net at ConsumerCarpets.com. Consumer Carpets, Jersey City, 201-792-27. Hudson County View, live on Uncut, John R. Hytus. And as I mentioned a few moments ago, today I'm joined with People's Park Foundation President Bob Hurley, who's, of course, one of the most well-known and accomplished high school basketball coaches of all time. Uh, Coach, thanks so much for coming in. My pleasure, John. So, uh, first of all, uh, before we get into the uh, nitty-gritty politics, I mean, I think congratulations <laughs> is in order. I mean, obviously, you've got a lot of uh, New Jersey residents here as we go into the Final Four that are big UConn fans right now. Obviously, your son's are go going on a heck of a run here. So tell us what you think about this run and what you think of this upcoming matchup. Well, it's been, uh, you know, when you get a chance to go to the NCAA tournament and you watch your son coach, you're just excited for that opportunity. So we went up to Albany and we watched the first two games and they won. So then we went to Las Vegas uh, this past weekend and they won two more. So now we're going to Houston to the Final Four and it's just... Uh, just a terrific thing, you know. You're watching your uh, your child do something at the, like the highest level, you know, in an area where you know this is one of the big sporting events of the year, the uh, the uh, you know Final Four and a tournament, and to be a part of it, you know, it's just phenomenal. So we're enjoying every moment. Of course. Uh, now, when you look at this matchup against Miami, you know, what do you think are the keys to victory here? Well, they have very good guards, you know, and and teams in the tournament that do well have always had good guards. So I think that'll be a, uh, an issue for them, how they, you know, how they handle those guards. And uh, if they play like they've been playing, and it's hard to like put something in a bottle and, and just uh, hold on to it for the following weekend, they'll be off an entire week since their last game. So what, how much can they carry over? I think that's big. Okay. And uh, what do you think about the other matchup for the potential finals? Uh, you know, it's funny. San Diego State has been playing very well, but the other team, Florida Atlantic, if they didn't have that FAU on the uniform, they would look like anybody else that's any you know, major team that's in the tournament. 
but people kind of dismiss them because it's a you know a fled, kind of a fledgling program. But I think that game is going to be a, a very good game, and I think people will see uh, you know two very good games on Saturday. All right, excellent. Well, again, best of luck there, and a, a lot of big fans out of New Jersey, mm -hmm. and of course Jersey City. Thank you. So, Thank you. with that said, let's uh, let's get into this People's Park Foundation. So, yep. look, uh, whether we're talking activists or. Uh, you know, some politicians and even some media outlets, they've taken this uh, view. The People's Park Foundation is basically uh, this extension of Paul Fireman's uh, plan to take over the park, right? No. So I'm imagining that's not how you see it, but uh, how do you view this organization yeah, you know, and their goals? It's interesting because I know Paul Fireman for a very long time. And uh, through locals like Jerry Walker, who played for me, and Elnata Webster, and uh, uh, Jerry McCann, who was a track coach, St. Peter's mm -hmm. Prep, who was from my neighborhood, uh, we've been talking for the longest time about availability of space in the park. You know, not changing the park, but making the park more inclusive. Having some things so that uh, you could have some practice fields there. Uh, you could have maybe a track in the place. You could have uh, things that, you know, we're sorely lacking in the rest of Jersey City and very honestly in, in the county of Hudson. You know, we don't have a, we don't have a, uh, a competition baseball field in Jersey City. So most of the teams go down and use Lincoln Park for games. And uh, when it comes to like practice for football, many of the football teams are practicing splitting of 50 yards each. And so it's just the, the, the overall facilities, for all of youth sports is just not there. And then for the people that are like the weekend warriors, and I'm certainly at this point in life, I'm a weekend warrior. I ride in the park every day. Yeah. And I'm in there, I'll be in there later as the sun comes out. And it's terrific. It could be more though. You know, there could be, in the middle of all this that's there, we could have multi-purpose fields for practice. We could have some community gardens. We could have a skate park. And a lot of that stuff would be on a very small portion of this large park. Basically not changing the way the park is, is laid out now, because most of the things that are being talked about are in the northern part of the park, almost going right down the road towards the railroad terminal which is one of the biggest issues, is that railroad terminal has just sat there for so long, and the asbestos in there is just a danger to anybody who uses the park regularly, right. which are the runners, people visiting the, the statue. So, you know, when there's, when there's a fight over this, it's not, I can understand that people want to hold on to something, but I, we're hoping it's just going to be a better version of the park. So for people that are environmentalists, I don't think putting in practice fields, a track and field, uh, not a stadium, but a, a facility where you can do, have a track meet, but also be another area where there would be an area for field events. Yeah. So you could throw the shot put and do other things, and the seating might be built into like a hill where people would sit in the hill to watch track meets, because track meets notoriously are in drawn large crowds. Yeah. I think the big issue becomes uh, when people talk about a football stadium, these, uh, the ideas that you're trying to build something that's going to accommodate uh, you know, professional, semi-professional teams, uh, it, it couldn't be further from the truth. Anyone who's had to play at Caven Point, John, it's just, it's a horrendous facility. Uh, the local teams that, uh, you know, Jersey City has six teams that play football. If you add all our other communities, nobody has a stadium uh, that's the quality of a state tournament game that the kids play if they go someplace else. Right. So, so as you know, the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection, they've committed to uh, restoring 61 acres of uh, the interior. Now, obviously you've laid out what your plan is, but uh, the Friends of Liberty State Park, you know, they're saying hands off the park. They're like, let's work out a couple select things. We right. don't want an amphitheater. We don't want a stadium. I mean, what's your view yeah. on that? Well, I think it's a negotiation. You know, I, I would say that at the end of this, uh, everybody from the People's Park, we're going to be, we're going to be, uh, we'll know that, that, that the park is in a better place when this work is going to be done. And as much as you talk about, you know, uh, what's going to be in, what shouldn't be in, the cleaning of the park should be done as we speak. True. Because that 224 acres in the middle of the park that's been fenced in has been sitting there since the, uh, you know, like 1980 with uh, contamination. Got it. So, if they do that right away, we're moving. If we clean up the railroad terminal, and then with bits and pieces in these phases, we start to give the community some uh, basketball courts and some soccer fields and some things that go in there, people are gonna be happy. 
I don't think we want to change the view. I don't think the park is going to become a uh, Disney World. I think it's going to be a place where more people could go. And like, I would say on a weekend, somebody could go from out of town, go to visit the uh, Statue of Liberty, get off the ferry, come into the park, maybe walk through the park, watch an activity in the park going on, be able to use bathrooms, because now about 80% of the bathrooms are Porta Johns. Uh, and there's no place to get a water or something to eat. There's no bikes. There's many things that'll be added that are not going to change the, uh, you know, they're not going to change the environment. Coach, hold that thought. We're yeah. going to take a quick break. We're going to be right back. Good Friend Self Storage in North Bergen, New Jersey, is a fully climate-controlled facility equipped with state-of-the-art security, packing supplies, a refer friend program, and multiple loading docks convenient for commercial use. Located just off of Route 3 at 4301 Tunnelly Avenue, Route 1 and 9. Call 201-867-2444 or visit us on the web today. Good Friend Self Storage, let us be your good friend. Anna Pinto Properties, Jersey City, shaping the workplace with state-of-the-art office spaces and addresses your company desires. Building residences that define your home environment, adjacent to all modes of transportation with on-site parking available. The right address, the right lease. Call 201-521-9000 or visit online at panapintodevelopment.com. Anna Pinto Properties, building Jersey City for everyone. Newport, the luxury waterfront community on the Hudson River offers a quality of life you deserve in one of our many high-rise towers. With amenities such as the on-site Newport Path, Light Rail, Newport Town Square, three playgrounds, dog run, upscale restaurants, retail giants like Kohl's, J.C. Penney, Macy's, and Target. Morton Williams and Acme Supermarket are just outside your front door. A health and fitness center, skating rink, and medical facilities are also on site. Enjoy the New York skyline from our waterfront and various parks. Manhattan is just one path stop away or a quick ride through the Holland Tunnel. Nursery and private elementary schools all on site. Tall screen movie theater at the Newport Center Mall. Looking to visit? Stay at the Westin or Marriott Hotel. For more information, visit us at NewportNJ.com. Make lasting memories to cherish forever. It's incredible. It's you, Newport. Live like you want. Not everyone celebrates the birth of a baby. You have options. Don't panic. New Jersey has safe havens for unwanted infants. Leave the baby with staff at any hospital, ER, police or fire station, or rescue squad. Call the number on your screen for safe haven locations or go to www.njsafehaven.org. No shame, no blame, no names. Safe Haven. That's at Gowdy View Live, and I've got John Aridis, and I'm still here with People's Park Foundation President and FABE Coach Bob Hurley. So, Coach, uh, you saw that there was a slideshow that was supposed to be a public meeting last week hosted by the DEP, obviously yes. postponed until further notice. Uh, the Friends of Liberty State Park are hailing this as a victory because if you look at the slideshow, there's no stadium, there's no amphitheater, and some of the amenities you guys asked for weren't in the presentation. So yeah. how do you take this? A win, loss? Uh, yeah, yeah, I hate to, yeah, John, I hate to characterize any of these things as wins and losses for, for people. You know, uh, <laughs> they've only put together you know, and a lot of this information is supposed to be task force information, which I'm on. So I'll say to you, more than 50% of, of the plan has been done already. Mm -hmm. But that's just done, you know, it's, it's not a completed thing. And there are going to be public meetings yet. And so last week, the public meeting was to just, I believe, let people know the progress going to be made. Because people want to know that there's going to be something there. And will, it be, will people be unhappy if things aren't there? Well, yes, people will be. But ultimately, as I said earlier, it's a negotiation. So, you know, victory and loss, I think if we don't get stuff done, it's a loss for the community because we like we have to get these things done because it's sitting there and we need to take advantage of its, uh, its potential, yet not change it. You know, because it's not a place that has to become anything other than a better version of what it is, which be more inclusive, more field, more recreation, you had a great place to take a book, go down there, you know, walk along the water, but you can't take a teenager there, the FOP, and all these people that are involved, all the athletic directors in Jersey City, superintendent of schools, they all know we need some things that the park could offer 
and then it would be phenomenal. So win or lose, we're going to lose if we don't get these things done in a short period of time. And, you know, I don't visit, I don't look at this NCAA tournament going on. I don't look at this as a game. I look at this as something that's pretty serious, and yet we'll, from this thing, get things that will really help us. It will never be a defeat because it's going to be better than it is in the minds of most people in the city when we put things in there that'll be more inclusive. Okay, understood. Yeah. Now, uh, in light of this meeting being postponed, uh, you guys had your own meeting at 902 Brewing Company. Unfortunately, yeah. couldn't make it with the council and the board of ed meetings. But nor, nor could I, because I, uh, I was out at the uh, regional. But uh, what was the goal of that meeting? And uh, yeah, just what was the goal of that meeting? Well, you know, everybody was, everybody was scheduled to be there that night at 6.30 to go to the, uh, the meeting where they were going to show people where the direction is going to go. Mm -hmm. And since these made meetings are scheduled, and we were told that we really should have a should have a uh, uh, have a response to this by having a lot of people there. We we didn't want to just call people a day in advance and say, "Oh, there's nothing." So what we had was like, I guess if it was if it was a if I could use it in sports terms, it was a rally. Yeah. You know, before UConn would leave for the tournament, they have a rally and they depart. So this would have been a rally for the people who were leaving at 6:30 to tell them that. All right, everything's been postponed. We'll get back to you with the next day. We want you all to be there because you're representing uh, youth, youth teams, you're representing senior citizens, you're uh, different groups are locally going to be there so that people know that, you know, there may be a very loud group of people that have uh, strong feelings about the park, but in life there's always a silent majority of people who need the things that the park could offer, and we want to keep them encouraged. Okay. Now, as you know, there's been a lot of messaging from the Friends of Liberty State Park and, uh, you know, Sam Pesson, obviously not a Paul Fireman fan, you know, yep. um, put out a couple emails, social media posts last week. So just to be clear, I mean, uh, just to clear the air, I guess, like, so is Paul Fireman, uh, you know, is he involved with the People's Park Foundation or does this have nothing to do with him or what? Well, I think back, and I have to go back with Paul Fireman, to be perfectly honest, right, the late 90s, when... Uh, Reebok became a, uh, a sponsor at my school, oh, yeah. and someone met. I met a coach at a, I met a man at a clinic, and he refer, he referred uh, Reebok to us. And within a period of time, probably in the late '90s, uh, Paul Fireman started to provide uniforms for my school, and ultimately became a sponsor of all our athletic teams, and actually helped us for a period of time financially as we tried to keep the school open. And then, I guess about four years ago, uh, Jerry Walker came to me and asked me if I would meet with him to talk about the park. And all of us, I've said for the longest time, have had strong feelings about the park. Yeah. I live downtown. I drive by the park regularly with my two grandkids to go to Bayon Park so that they can play on the basketball courts, go to a nicer playground, uh, be able to get something to eat there. So in meeting, uh, it became a goal of his to get involved in this. And I know that if we take Sam Pesson and Paul Fireman out of the equation and we just make it about what we could do, well, I'm on the side that Paul Fireman built to oppose the side that Sam Pesson's on. So yes, I'm on the side with Paul Fireman, but there isn't a time when I talk to him that isn't something related along the lines of, what do I think we need in this area? Because I'm, of the people involved in this, I'm probably the oldest guy, have had the most experience in this area. So. Uh, Yes, he's been involved in the beginning of this. This foundation now, the People's Park, are all these local people. It's people that uh, want to make sure that in this negotiation, we get a healthy amount of the things we're looking for, and we will concede that we're not going to get everything, but we deserve to get everything, yet in the politics of the world, we're not going to get everything we want, yet we're going to keep fighting, and we'll see where this all turns out. Long answer. I don't know if that gets you what you wanted, but uh, <laughs> I think that's uh, it's it's a uh, it's been it's it's hard because you you you're trying to explain that when a, a an athletic director calls and he explains his situation, there's no answers because Lincoln Park in Jersey City can only do a certain amount of things. This Blake just it's just staring at us no, to be I get it. to be an alternative. Coach, thank you so much. Yeah. Lady, let's go UConn, ladies and gentlemen. Don't go anywhere yet. Thanks, sir. We'll be right back. There's a lot of punch packed into this Bronco Sport. It's got a ton of horsepower, I love it. 
Alright, now we're getting hairy, now we're getting the fun stuff. Yeah. I like how we can get over or around almost anything. Yeah, I did your ride. <laughs> Super dig it. It's gonna be a good day. Growing up can be tough on kids. So much is going on in the world that can cause depression or anxiety. Unusual behavior for more than six months could mean they need help. Don't wait. For real-time mental health support and counseling, call New Jersey's Children's System of Care. CSOC offers free mental health supports, substance use treatment, and services for intellectual or developmental disabilities for all kids up to age 21. Call now, 1-877-652-7624. Introducing the all-new Ford Maverick. A truck for people who do stuff. And people who make stuff. People like Gabrielle Union. I make this look good, don't I? Who haul whatever they want to wherever they want. Like wood to build things made of wood with. And friends to get weird with. It's for long trips that the standard hybrid engine with a targeted EPA estimated city fuel economy rating of 40 miles per gallon helps with. That an eight inch touchscreen connects with. And any trip that this interior makes more comfortable. But we'll let Gabrielle tell you all about it. Or I could just tell them it's a Ford truck that starts at less than 20,000 MSRP. Yep, that works too. The all new Ford Maverick built to defy expectations. Around front, please. We designed the F-150 to be tough. And we delivered on towing and payload like you'd expect. We also made it smart, starting with an available hybrid powertrain. This engine also allows you to use your truck as a high wattage generator. It's the kind of capability that a truck owner's really never had before. Hudson County View live at Uncut Chat, Our Highness. So like I said, quite a few things happening in Jersey City and Hoboken on the public safety end. So first of all, obviously uh, got to offer our condolences to the Jersey City Police Department and the Santiago family, Noel Santiago Jr just 43 years old, passed away last week after a long bout with cancer. And uh, the family has since started a GoFundMe page in hopes of uh, helping his three boys, uh, you know, in their future endeavors, whether educational or otherwise. So they just started that yesterday. They set an ambitious goal of $100,000. And they've already reached over a quarter of their goal. I'm just looking at it right now, and they're at $25,130. So certainly a lot of community support, already 100 83 donations, so it's good to see the community come together on something like this. So, for those of you that maybe didn't know Officer Santiago, uh, you know, his wife Stephanie gave a very detailed uh, description in that GoFundMe page, and uh, let me just read you an excerpt or two here. So, Jersey City Police Officer Noel Santiago Jr. lost his battle with cancer on March 24, 2023, at the young age of 43. He is missed dearly and survived by his wife, three small boys, ages four, two, and one. Uh, along with so many family, friends, and brothers and sisters in blue to mention. To know Noel was to love him. He built friendships with almost everyone who came in contact with because of his kind spirit, generous nature, and witty banter. He always made himself available to anyone who needed help or a listening ear. He was a protector to all. For these reasons and so many others, being a police officer was Noel's calling. So while he had uh, been on the JCPD for about uh, six, seven years, He's actually had a 17 plus year career in law enforcement. He started out with Hudson County Corrections and uh, then ended up getting transferred to the Hudson County Sheriff's Office and of course eventually the Jersey City Police Department. And uh, you know, just uh, what can you say? Just a really terrible situation. If you have the means, you know, I would uh, just politely urge you to help this family in need out. So with that, you know, what one last uh, really sad note for the day, hopefully at least, uh, we wanted to also mention what happened in Hoboken, their former fire chief, that's Richard Tremediti, and uh, he was the fire chief from 1990 to 1995. He also passed over the weekend. And uh, just quickly, you know, we heard from the Hoboken Fire Department, Memories Facebook page run by a uh, retired firefighter of the Mile Square. And uh, long story short, he said, it's with great sadness that I ask you all to join me in extending our deepest condolences to the family and friends of a retired Hoboken Fire Chief, Richard Tremediti, who I was notified has passed away. No further information is available at this time. 
We thank you, Chief, for your service to the citizens of Hoboken, alongside your brothers on the job. Rest in peace, my friend. Uh, you know, as of this moment, uh, there is still no cause of death listed. I know funeral services were held last night. So if uh, any additional information comes to light, we'll certainly let you know. And uh, of course, the Hoboken Fire Department as a whole issued some uh, words. They said, we said condolences and prayers to the family of retired Hoboken Fire Chief Richard Trebedini, who we learned has passed away. Thank you for your service, Chief, RIP. So with that, uh, you know, again, thoughts and prayers, condolences. Uh, obviously, that's just, uh, that's just another sad situation. So. With that, we're gonna get back into uh, the more government and politics side of things. So let's talk a little bit about this rumor that's been floating around for weeks or months, depending who you ask. There seems to be a belief that the Jersey City and Hoboken Fire Departments were having at least some preliminary conversations to merge departments. Now, this is something that uh, we talked about in about September or October, and we really didn't hear much about it. On the Jersey City side, we saw uh, Chief Stephen McGill retired about a month or so ago, and now all of a sudden this is starting to heat up again in light of this email from one of the Jersey City uh, firefighter unions. So now the first we heard about this was actually eight days ago. The, the budget hearings in Hoboken all have about uh, 30 minutes to an hour earmarked per department, and the one for the Public Safety Department in Hoboken was on March 20th, so that was last Monday. And we heard from Third Ward Councilman Mike Russo, and he asked if there were any way, shape, or form at discussing any reorganization with any other fire departments. And their public safety director, Ken Ferrante, acknowledged that there were conversations with uh, Jersey City around this time last year, and two possibilities were discussed. And basically, he said those conversations were between March and May. The last meeting was on May 24th. That's, of course, 2022. And... The way he explained it, there was a discussion of two possible things. One is called an auto aid, mutual aid system, where the Jersey City Fire Department will be able to respond directly to fires in the south end of Hoboken. And in that scenario, Hoboken would be able to respond to the Newport area at Jersey City Heights without the need to follow mutual aid, the current guideline. So he further explained that right now, for North Hudson or Jersey City Fire Departments to come in on mutual aid, Hoboken has to have a full crew, which is 20 to 23 members on the scene, and in this auto aid system scenario, they wouldn't have to do that anymore. They could just show up right away. So again, you know, he said there's no meeting since May 24th, 2022. Uh, and he said, though, they do need to do something because, uh, as he described it, he called it a metropolis being planned to be built over NJ Transit train tracks at Hoboken could lead to an influx of 5,000 to 10,000 new residents in the next five to 10 years. And the only way you could accommodate the fire department at Hoboken would put another three to four million dollars into uh, their budget, and that would be on the backs of the taxpayers, of course. Now, he said at the end, it's baby steps. We're years away from any further talks of a merger. He was clear that the mutual aid plan would have to be in place for a couple years to even entertain a full-fledged merger. Now, interestingly, Jersey City didn't respond to a request for comment, but that email from the union uh, that was specifically from local fire officers, uh, 1064 President Peter Nowak, and uh, they had a 90-minute meeting with Mayor Fulop and his staff, and they said, Hoboken will be treated as Jersey City's 5th Battalion, while Jersey City will gain fire protection on the northeast side of the city. We're going to take one more break. We'll be right back. The Ford Maverick is a smaller truck, but the available 2.0-liter EcoBoost engine has plenty of horsepower and torque and allows you to tow all kinds of stuff. Stevens Jersey City Ford Certified Parts and Service located at Route 440 and Communipaw Ave is your number one source for Ford and Lincoln automotive needs. We use certified Ford Motocraft products to keep your Ford running in top shape. Motocraft parts are backed with the Ford warranty which includes a two year unlimited mileage guarantee. Our team will have the right Motocraft part to ensure the best performance from your Ford or Lincoln. You can order in person at the parts counter or online. Let us help keep your Ford or Lincoln in the best shape at Stevens Jersey City Ford. Burns Brothers Memorials, Monuments, and Markers, 787 Tunley Avenue, Jersey City. Hudson County's only monument maker, serving all faiths and cemeteries. Design studio and launch inventory on site. Cemetery inscriptions and custom orders welcome. Burns Brothers Memorials, Monuments, and Markers, 787 Tunley Avenue, just south of Seacorkers Road. Craftsmanship that will last for all eternity. Burns Brothers, Jersey City, Albert H. Hopper, North Arlington. Visit us on the net. 
ended up happening on Thursday, as I mentioned earlier today, had a couple interesting things. And I think the one that everyone had their eye on was about the 911 dispatch. And, uh, you know, obviously, Jersey City has their own 911 dispatch system with the police and fire dispatch both work out of as well. And uh, this is a contract that they actually had the city council consider back in November and it got voted down. So the contract got put back again. You probably recall that Mayor Stephen Fulop, uh, in an interview with me, he mentioned that this was something that he supported. It's no secret that in the past couple years, 911 has dropped calls. You know, people have been on hold. People can't get through. And this is the first time we actually heard from the 911 workers who has been deemed first responders during the pandemic. And, um, you know, basically, we heard from quite a few people that pointed the finger at the public safety director, Jim Shea. You know, they said the management basically hasn't been doing their job. Their contract hasn't been honored. And, uh, you know, a lot of strong allegations. But again, they've been getting beat up pretty bad ever since the whole Taqueria thing last month. Obviously, a horrible situation where somebody drove the car into the restaurant. And, uh, you know, people couldn't get through to 911 due to the volume. And that just highlighted this problem, which, again, has been ongoing for a couple years. Uh, and uh, But look, they're saying that they're working overnight. They're working holidays. And uh, it's the same people that are working these shifts. And for that reason, you know, management needs to step up and they need to solve the problem. Obviously, that hasn't happened yet. And as we heard from 20, 30, 40 of these workers, eventually the council came to the conclusion uh, well, via the administration, you know, business administrator John Metro got up and announced they were going to withdraw the resolution for consideration. So a very uh, tumultuous situation that unfortunately doesn't look like it's any closer to, to a solution now. But real quick, let me give you an excerpt. I mean, Nicole Burrell, who uh, is a dispatcher, said we have management that are basically high paid security guards. They have zero managerial training and no people skills. We have members of management with more than half a dozen ex uh, EO complaints. Constant harassment, retaliation, discrimination, driving by the feeling of personal management have contributed to this very hostile work environment. And seeing these articles and complaints about 911 is not, not answering is a little frustrating. We do not get the luxury of a phone ringing on our ears and get to decide if we answer the call or not. Paying a private company is not the answer. So, you know, hopefully both the administration, the council, and these uh, valuable workers can all come together, sit at a table and work this out. Obviously, this is something of the utmost importance. Now, very quickly, another thing that uh, a lot of people missed was that there was the first reading of a measure that would make St. Paul's Avenue between Tunnelly and Liberty Avenues a one-way street. Just the first reading, but it passed 611, and uh, an irate Ward C. Councilman uh, Rich Baggiano ended up abstaining, and Councilman at large Daniel Rivera voted no. Ward E. Councilman James Solomon was absent. So this is one to keep your eye on going forward. With that, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to call it a week. We'll see you next time.